Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. Alongside my recent three decks for beginners video, I also wanted to provide some more easy to craft decks for newer and intermediate players. I'll be covering each region one after another, that way you have a direction to go based on your favorite region. Hello, my name is Tempo and I've hit master tier every season since the beta, even peaking rank 1 multiple times on the North American ladder, and I will be your guide to Legends of Runeterra. So small disclaimer before I get into the first one, these decks won't be able to be crafted day 1. These are primarily meant as solid cores to go for after a few weeks of playing and understanding which regions or playstyles you enjoy the most. If you want the easiest and most budget decks to craft, I recommend checking out my 3 decks for beginners video from a few weeks ago. And we're journeying over to the Shadow Isles. So here we have Darkness, which is the deck that most new players gravitate towards if they want to play control decks. The main theme of the deck is to play reactive and use removal spells to slow down what the opponent is trying to do and whittle away at their resources while you develop your own win conditions. So to do that we have Triple Pie Toss, which is a really good removal from Bandle City, 1 mana fast speed spell deal 1 to a unit, and then you also get to create a 2 mana slow speed spell in hand called Perilous Pastry that lets you do 1 to anything, so you can hit the enemy nexus or you can hit more units with it. So really cool that it uh, is a 2 for 1 deal essentially, you do have to spend extra mana on the second one and it is slow speed, but honestly, a really strong card overall. Next we have Quietus, which is another removal spell, 1 mana slow speed. Kill a unit with total power and health of 4 or less, so you can kill like a 2-2 with it, a 1-3, pretty much anything as long as it has less than 4 stat points total. Or you can also use this card to destroy a unit's equipment. Equipment is basically weapon cards that go onto units and give them enhanced stats, so it's really nice to have the option to destroy that just straight up. Next we have Triple Cease of Sentry, 2 mana 2-1. Two, Last breath, draw a card. Really nice to put down in the early game to trade into some aggressive units while you're also able to get ahead by drawing a card. Conchologist basically does the same thing. He's a 2 mana 2 1 as well. On play, you manifest a spell from your regions that cost 3 or less. So you're shown 3, you get to pick 1. Super nice, especially when you need to find just like one little extra thing, right? If you're missing something from your hand, Conchologist can help fill that out for you. Next we have Dark Bulb Acolyte, 2 mana 2 2, Augment, so when you play a created card, grant me 1 0. Created cards can be something like the Perilous Pastry from Pi, or it can also be a created card from Conchologist, or its own card in the main theme of the deck, Darkness. Darkness is a slow speed spell that says deal 2 to an enemy. Dark Bulb Acolyte also generates this for you, allowing him to be self-synergistic. Very very cool card. And next we have Glimpse Beyond, 2 mana fast speed spell, kill an ally to draw 2. Just a classic Shadow Walls card, been here since the beginning, very very strong reactive tool. If your unit is getting shot and removed, you can use Glimpse Beyond to turn that already dead unit into a draw 2. Next we have Double Soul Harvest, 2 mana slow speed spell, kill a follower with 3 or less power, or spend 1 extra mana here to kill a champion with 3 or less power. Very nice, very flexible, can use this in the early mid game to try to keep some of our opponent's strategies down. Next we have one of the strongest cards in the deck, Twisted Catalyzer. 2 mana 3 2, strike, so if he attacks, blocks, anything, as long as he deals damage with his uh, attack stat, grant your darkness everywhere 1 extra damage. So now we have a way to start ramping up the darkness spell, so we can generate future ones and they'll come to our hand with extra damage. Next we have Stilted Roadmaker, a 4 mana 3 4, when I'm summoned reduce the cost of your darkness everywhere by 1. So if we get Roadmaker down it's going to be a 2 mana darkness whenever we generate it. If we get Roadmaker and also a Catalyzer Strike, well hey, then that's a uh, 2 mana, 3 damage one, and that feels fantastic for us, that's so so good. So you can definitely get out of control with the multiple catalyzers, multiple rope makers, you're just going to be constantly slinging out darknesses that scale up in damage, but also have reduced cost, so you can keep slamming them for uh, 1 mana, 2 mana, hey, sometimes you can even get this down to free by the way if you play all 3 rope makers, so that's super good. Next we have Vagar, he's a 4 mana 1-4, when I'm summoned create a darkness in your hand if you don't have one, so that's nice, he's a darkness generator, just gives it to us. Round star, grant your darkness everywhere 1 extra damage, so the catalyzer effect, ramping up the darkness, that's awesome. He levels up if you've dealt 12 darkness damage over the course of the game, and then he becomes Grand Overseer Vagar. He still has the on summon darkness generator, but also he gets it every round star if you don't have one, which is super good. Also, he still does the plus one damage to it every round start, and you can now play Darkness targeting anything. So you can use Darkness to target the enemy face, and then just kind of give yourself a two or three turn lethal. If your Darkness is up to like, you know, six damage, you can just hit the opponent for six, and then 
for 7 the next turn if he's still on the board because it amps up, and then for 8 the next turn, and then they pretty much just die. Depending on how much damage you've dealt to the opponent over the course of the game, you can do it in 1 or 2 darknesses, and that's basically how the deck wants to close out in a lot of its games. Next we have our other champion, Senna, 5 mana 4, 4, quick attack. When I'm summoned or attack, create a darkness in hand, so we have another generator here in the form of a champion, which is super nice. It's really cool that you can get darkness with her on attack call. So what often ends up happening is you go into the attack while also using your darkness, just like casting it. The attack call will happen and then you'll get another darkness while your first one that you casted is still on the stack. So that's a really nice trick for Senna, just to get out extra darknesses and try to get her level up condition going. Another thing she does is she accelerates your kill spells too fast. That's why you're able to do it during combat, because darkness is usually a slow speed spell. Well now she accelerates it to a fast speed spell, and that just feels awesome. This is a really cool passive for Senna to have, even on her level 1, it's like super super powerful. She levels up if she's seen you kill 3 units with spells, or an allied Lucian dies. We don't have Lucian in this deck, so that's not going to happen. But it's pretty easy to kill 3 units while Senna is on the board. In her level 2 form, she maintains her summon and attack effect to create darkness, but she also accelerates the uh, spells to fast while making them cost one less. So she has a discount on darkness built into her level 2, which is super cool, and also to other um, kill spells that we're running. And next we have Ishtali Sentinel, 6 mana 4 5 with lifesteal, making her a very good card in two aggro matchups. When I'm summoned, create a darkness in hand if you don't have one, fantastic. When you play your next darkness this round, copy it targeting the enemy nexus. So you basically get a little bit of a 2 for 1 deal, you can shoot an opponent's unit, and it will also just extra cast over on the enemy nexus, dealing some direct damage. What's really cool with this is if you have Grand Overseer Vagar on the board, he lets you cast your first darkness at the enemy nexus, and Ishtali Sentinel, if she's been summoned this turn and that's where your darkness you know, came from and that's what you're playing, then you can cast uh, a second darkness on the enemy nexus because that's just what she allows you to do. So you can just do a little double tap, bop bop, and sometimes you can kill your opponent that way. Really fun way to close out some games. Next we have Triple Vengeance, 6 mana fast speed spell, kill a unit. Classic. Shadow Wilds, absolute classic. Just kill a unit. Very strong. Double Rekindler in case our Vagar or our Senna dies. What's really strong about this is that Vagar and Senna both have on summon effects to get your darkness, so Rekindler also basically comes with that. And 1 of Ruination, this is a panic button, a lot of Shadow Wilds decks run this at 1 of if it's playing nice, slow, and controlled. It's really good to just clear the board if the opponent overdevelops, or if they play something like super big and then invest all their mana into it, you can just do a full reset and then try to uh, claw your way back. What I like about this deck is it is also kind of open-ended, you can do a lot more things with it. You can run more removal like group shot if you want to just shoot more uh, low HP things. You can run things like Otterpus, which has been played before, right? You get the 1 mana 1-1, one, one, it pays for itself, you get to prank the opponent's hand, get some hand knowledge, mess with the opponent's hand a little bit, players often like that. You can even run, you know, Skip. Skip is a really good card. We don't really protect Skip with this deck, so it's just for the same kind of thing as Otterpus. Hand reading, messing with the opponent's hand, make them have to respond to Skip to get their card back. And there's also like Drop the Bomb if you want to run that too, because it's a uh, slow speed Mystic Shot. You can speed this up with uh, Senna, and that's nice just to have the two damage removal spells. So there's a lot of like cool little things that you can add in or play with, and I think that's pretty nice. And that's it for the deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. I'll be giving context to why I'm playing certain cards and hopefully it gives you a good feel on how to play the deck. And for this example game, we're fighting the ever popular Nora Elder Dragon. Vagar, Ruination, Pytos, Robe Maker. Pretty good hand overall. I think we could pitch the Ruination, maybe try to draw into it later in case we're like super far behind. I actually think Vengeance is a little bit more important along with our just like early removal spells. And then keep the other two, yeah. Robemaker Vagar are super nice to play, especially back to back. Mm -hmm. We can't really stop Nora from hitting me on turn two, though. Even if we do Pi, then they would have next action attack. Yeah, so we can't really do much. If we had Quietus or Soul Harvest here, we could kill the Nora. But, uh, yeah, we don't exactly have that. We'll just play the Season Sentry out, let them get one portal. Nice, we got Senna in our hand as well. Let's open attack here. See if they also try to throw removal at us. They have Pytos and they have group shot and stuff too. Um, yeah. Let's go ahead and just kill the Nora then. Group 
three mana, kill Nora. Just like if we had Soul Harvest. Only issue is they got a Nexus Strike in, but just one, so. Just like that, minus one champion. No portal yet. All I want to do, Robe Maker. Portal Palooza, okay, some more portals. Just one right now. A 3-3. Three, three. Pretty rough. Um, yeah, we can block it and draw a card. Another Soul Harvest is nice. Or this is our first one. We can use this on Nora if she gets resummoned. I actually kind of want to play Vagar here because he's safe in the two mana. That way we can start getting our round start damage amping. He's usually better if you can play him safely. He wasn't super safe until they played so much mana that I knew that he couldn't be threatened this turn. Wow. That's all kind of scary, actually, isn't it? Um... I definitely want to commit a darkness this turn, right? So, let's do Robe Maker to have a blocker. And we have two mana darkness, which should feel nice for us. Mini morph yet. That's a big, big investment. Let's shoot the... Donnie. Because it's actually pretty easy for them to get uh, fast spell synergy out of their hand. And then I'm going to take extra damage. So let's go ahead and kill that one, because he's actually kind of annoying. And then, mayhaps, we only attack with the Stilted Robe Maker. Reason being is we can save the 3-3 to block anything that we want. 3-4 gets to beat over both of them, and also push 3 damage in case they don't want the block. So honestly, this is just a good trade for us. Goes ever so slightly in our favor, so I'm going to take that. Alright, turn 6. We did got our Ruination back. That's good, that's good. Sign in. Deathless sign in. That is a classic. I can't do anything about that at the current moment. Actually, yes, I can. <laughs> what if we kill sign in and let them redraw and just burn their hand? That sounds funny to me. So I'm going to do it. You have a grand old time because you have nine cards. Deathless sign in is so risky. So you're going to draw one, and then burn Bromane. Only issue is, I guess the Ruthless Raider gets to hit me for one more now, but that's fine. Probably wasn't going to block it anyways. And I would have taken extra damage from the sign-in had I left it alive, so honestly, pretty much same result. Go ahead and play the Catalyzer. And then we could probably play Senna and then have the two mana for darkness. I kind of like that. All right, burn another card. You already lost the Bro main. What else? A Pie Toss. All right, sure. That's pretty nice. All right, let's go. Got the Senna cooking. Two mana, fast speeds. Uh, darkness, we can attack with Senna, get another darkness. All good. Punch. Mm -hmm. Let us take a peek at yep. beneath the waves. Let's go ahead and full send it. Actually, I don't want to full send it. Let's shoot this thing. Because I don't really like her. We could do like the attack stack uh, Senna darkness thing. But then they can just put the unit in front of my Catalyzer and he won't get a strike in. And that feels kind of miserable. Trixie Tentacles. My lowest cost card. Alright, goodbye Glimpse. Concentrated forgiveness. Trixie Tentacles is kind of just like a cringe BM card. Whatever. Just rude. Just kind of rude, isn't it? And then we can attack with Senna. Get another Darkness. Pioneer, okay. Pioneer's probably going to turn off keywords, maybe turn off my Senna's quick attack if I had to guess. I don't run landmarks, I don't run weapons, and I don't know if they need to heal, so... Let's probably just turn off quick attack, yeah. Darkness and light. Persistence is key. Hmm? Yeah. Seems good. Four damage darkness is like really nice. 
and play sentry out. We're going into eight. Acolytes. So yeah, it's probably darkness, acolyte, darkness. We can get a lot done here, huh? We can also play conch with that because that's two, four, six. Eight. What's this? What is this? What are you playing? I didn't watch. What is it? What shenanigans am I encountering here? I can't see. Oh, Face Sprout from Trinket Trade. Okay. Tea Maker. Another Portal card. Very cute. Anthrologist. Let's get. Wow, Condense? Hellstones? Or Wallop? Hmm. <laughs> Condense actually has a lot of good targets for us, like Sentinel. Then we can just keep shooting the enemy Nexus. Ah. Oh. Well, that's extremely cringe. As a response to the boon, though, we can play Darkness and then play Dark Bulb Acolyte and have another Darkness. And then just finish that unit off before he kills my Senna. Look at the spell slinging we're doing. Let's go. So yeah, we can kill that and then I guess open attack too. Just get some more damage in and then start trying to shoot their face over and over with darkness until uh until they die. Oh interesting. Just passing. I still want to shoot it. It didn't really change much. I still want to shoot that. Just by the way. Yeah, and then we're gonna commit to open attack. All right, please no portal on top one. Nice. Keep your distance. Oh, we even have a uh, a vengeance type effect now. Darkness and light. Dawning shadow, kill a unit, give all enemies minus two. Oh, they're going to six. Hey yo, that's kind of good for us. Going down to six, huh? Hmm. I like the sound of that. I like the sound of that a lot, since we could be winning on turn 10 now. Otter Puss, yeah. Sentinel. I will shape death as easily as clay. Just do not prank my darkness with a plus two. Oh my goodness. They pranked my ruination with a plus two, which is kind of rude. But what I want to do here, right, is Darkness the Otterpus that deals four to face because of each Tali Sentinel. And then next turn, I want to condense each Tali, replay her, and then shoot for four more. So it's like a pretty quick lethal. Oh, we're going to shoot that instead. Yeah, we are hella shooting that. As long as my Ishtali Sentinel does not get killed. Because that would be cringe. I definitely don't want that. But I think we can get there. The Alright. This is also Senna level. I'm here till it's done. And it's never done. And, light. and now she accelerates our spells by one mana. So we have five mana vengeance. I'm probably just going to use the Relic of Power, uh, predict to draw, right? Just use a time trick and play something else. I don't think portals can really save them at this point. I don't think they run uh, Puzzling Signposts either, so they can't really stop my darkness, I don't believe. As soon as I resolve this Condense, I'm pretty sure I just have this. Oh, Lifesteal is not cool at all, by the way. Lifesteal is not cool at all, actually. All of a sudden... Oh my goodness. It's a bit scary. We are chilling. We can even spend the five mana for Dawning Shadow. Just kill the Elder Dragon on his summon. 
That is going to heal though, which is kind of cringe, isn't it? And we have next action, condense each Tali Sentinel, play it, and we still have the mana for darkness too. Oh, they're condensing my Sentinel. What are you doing? Why are you condensing my Sentinel? Kind of weird. You don't gotta be doing all that. Like, weren't. <laughs> So yeah, we have exact lethal. So I Sentinel, and then this should be a one mana darkness accelerated by the Senna, and that will be four to face. Goodbye. Let's go, Ishtali Sentinel lethal. A little bit of a tricky combo there with the Conchologist getting the condense too. Very nice. And the next deck I have for you is pretty similar actually. This is. The Senna Nasus, you basically take Senna from the Darkness and Drama tutorial deck and you take Nasus away from the Slay deck and you can slap them together and then you have a very cheap deck that you can craft. It's going to be doing pretty much the same thing as Darkness like I just mentioned, however instead of investing in the Darkness synergy and all those cards that interact with it, we're just going to be using straight up kill spells and then amping up Nasus by using those kill spells, that way he can come down and be a game ender later. Starting us off, we have Bakai Reaper, a 1 mana 1 2, a fearsome. When you slay a unit, grant me 1 0. Slay happens if you kill an enemy during combat, or if you kill any unit with a spell, including your own. This will amp up Slay, so this will also amp up Nasus. Just like in the last deck, we have the Double Quietus, really good for early removal and also for weapon removal. Cease the Sentry coming in this deck as well, really good card, keep the draws going. Here's a new one, this is Fading Icon, 2 mana 3 1, when I'm summoned, summon a Prey. Prey is just a 0 1 token, and we can use this token as a target for our removal spells. Things like Hate Spike and Death Grasp, which we'll talk about, require us to have a target to sacrifice in order to get its effect off. So just a really cool card to give us that, on top of a 3 attack unit in the early game. And we have Glimpse Beyond, just like the last deck, really nice kill spell. We generate tokens, so we can use Glimpse kind of proactively sometimes if we're running out of cards in hand, but for the most part, again, we want to use Glimpse as a reaction to removal. Next we have Hate Spike, 2 mana fast speed spell. Kill an ally to deal 3 to a unit, and summon a random husk. So here we go. We want to be targeting our token with this Hate Spike, kill it, deal 3 to something that the opponent has developed, which is super nice. A lot of good 3 HP units in the early mid game. We can just uh, keep that down kill it off, and then also get a husk. Husks are random like zero ones that also have keywords, and when you play a unit later, you kill the husk by playing the unit, and then the unit will eat it, giving it the extra HP and whatever keyword it had. So fun little synergy there. We can get like a random husk on our Senna, and that should feel awesome. We have double soul harvest coming in again, a really good removal. Decent champion removal too for the early game champions. Next we have the Death Grasp, 3 mana fast speed spell, kill an ally to deal 5 to a unit, basically hate spike on crack, dealing 2 more damage but not getting a husk is pretty worth, because um, this card hits a lot of mid game stuff too. 5 HP is a massive massive hit, so being able to deal that is fantastic. Next we have Double Quicksand for those pesky elusive decks, being able to turn off uh, those keywords, super nice. We can also turn off Overwhelm, and then we can Chump Block without taking extra piercing damage, or we can just use it for uh, big attack mitigations, that way we're not taking as much. Next we have Triple Undying, which is a reoccurring token for us. 3 mana 2-2, two, two, can't block. Last Breath revive me at the next round start, and grant me 1-1 one, one for each time I've died, so it ramps up. We can use this as a Death Grasp target, we can use this as a Hate Spike target, and that should be pretty awesome. Uh, if Senna sees Undying die, by the way, to one of these spells, that will count as a plus one for her, and then also another plus one if we kill the opponent's unit with it, so Undying is just like super valuable, super good card, super good target for all of these uh, kill spells. Next we have the Double Rite of Negation, 4 mana fast speed spell, kill an ally or destroy one of your mana gems to stop all enemy fast speed spells, slow speed spells, and skills on the stack. Basically AoE deny, if the opponent puts up 6 spells and skills on the stack, 
we can use right of negation and target an ally or we can destroy a mana gem for like guaranteed that way they can't interact with the ally and stop the effect but we can just obliterate all of them so right of negation really comes in clutch it's really good against those big top end spells like war mother's call or anything that the opponent is trying to just solo win with same with like champion strength same with like uh, ruination if they're behind same with buried in ice you know right negation just has a lot of value in the meta next we have eradication technically it's optional you don't have to run this but i would highly recommend it because when senna is on the board this becomes fast speed and that feels awesome for you so five mana slow speed spell normally kill all units with three or less power it's kind of like a stronger avalanche but for one more because you can kill like a bunch of two threes you can kill a bunch of three threes and you should just like blow out the game and win versus those aggressive and mid-range matchups if you resolve eradication at the proper time. And again, if you have Senna on the board and this is fast speed, you can do it during combat too. So the opponent can't even open attack to try to dodge eradication. They're just going to lose straight up if you get this off. So really, really strong card. Would recommend for this deck in particular. Next, we have Senna, which we just covered. So I'm not going to go uh, through it again. Uh, same thing as the Darkness deck, we're going to level by killing units with spells. This can include our own units. And then her level 2 form is just as good. Uh, we have extra Vengeances, so feels awesome. Yep, Senna in this deck is just giving us the Darkness, and then we can use it as a deal too. We're never amping it up, sadly, because we're not investing in the Darkness spell. But it is nice to uh, have the extra removal anyways. Next we have our other champion, Nasus. He's normally a 6-3-3, however, he gains plus 1, plus 1 for each unit you've slain this game. So he can just come out as like a 10-10, which is exactly where you want him because he has Fearsome, and then when he strikes for 10 damage, he becomes Super Nasus. Super Nasus is going to have Spell Shield and also a Aura that gives enemies minus 1 attack, and that's really nice since he's Fearsome. So it's going to be harder to put up blockers for him, it's going to be harder to push into you, and then you're just going to swing with Nasus and uh, kill the opponent as long as he gets a direct hit in. He's going to be a big, big boy. So that should feel awesome as well. And then we have two Vengeance because, of course, we need that. And two Castigate. This is a really big AoE kill all followers. So if the opponent has just set up like a bunch of followers, they're not really playing a champion reliant strategy, you can just spend seven mana to kill everything. It's like a faster and more efficient ruination depending on the board state. Speaking of faster, you can also make this fast speed with Senna. And what's really cool about this is Senna dodges. She dodges Eradication and she dodges Castigate while making them both fast speed. So I think that's like a really cool synergy that this deck has that Darkness doesn't. So if you prefer like the removal uh, of this deck and like the self slaying and then also like the amping up Undying, the amping up Nasus and the fast speed Eradication and Castigate being relevant, you'll like this deck more than Darkness. They're both like super strong control decks for what they want to do they both have really good removal tools but basically how you get to the win is different these should both feel pretty easy to craft since you're given a straight up darkness and drama deck that has vegar senna and then you're also given nasus so definitely try out both if you can and that's it for the deck rundown now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out and for this example game we're gonna fight a recently uh popular deck not so much anymore since it got nerfed. This is Neela Janna. This was like the queens of the last expansion. So we have Quietus, which is good against their uh, early cards. We have Sentry, which is nice. Vengeance, Eradication. Honestly, get rid of Vengeance, keep the rest. Eradication is super nice into them because a lot of their units are three attack or less, including both of their champions. And then we can use Castigate in case they don't draw their champions and they play all their like elusives and quick attack dudes. So we kind of just have them on lockdown. Is it Nila on two or what? It is Nila on two. It's always Nila on two. If only we had our soul harvest and then we could kill that Nila. All good though. Let's uh, just let them hit, I suppose. Not really much we can do about that at the moment. But she has Brash, which means I can't even block with my ceaseless entry, you know? Go ahead and play him, because I don't think they're going to overcommit to the board and die to Eradication this turn. Might Eradication on 4 when Janna comes down. Many Master Lookout. Ahead, sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's see the Janna here. No? Open attack. Yeah, I guess it'd be open attack and then Janna, which also makes sense. And then I guess I shall pass. We're just going to play reactive here. 
The longer the game goes, I think the more it favors me, so they're not going to accept this pass. There's the Janna. And here is our eradication. Killing both champions, also drawing us a card. They get to draw two next round start though because of Janna, so they're going to end up in a pretty similar hand state as they were before. Alright, turn 5 looks like Undying, and then we have Deathgrass mana. Our Nasus already at 7, by the way. Holy. He's big. Big boy Nasus. Love that. Uh, Undying. The only issue is they have removal too, so they can interact with Death Grasp. Which is kind of rough. E and Z is, you know, is a classic for having removal spells. So we probably won't get away with anything willy-nilly. I do want to get the Nasus down on 6 probably and maybe use his champion spell to just like absolutely clock one of their units. Hey, Mariner. Yeah. Free Mariner since they drew extra cards this turn. Nila. Hello Nila. Let's do Quietus on this. This is actually like one of our better quietest targets, so might as well just use that and float three. That way we're not burning any mana this turn. Getting another Neela. It's pretty annoying for me. Yeah, it's a little hard to use Death Grasp here. I kind of just want to slam Nasus. Yeah, I don't see why not upstream what are we going to like level Neela in one turn or something I'm, I'm a little worried <laughs> probably not but it is a bit worrying attack again there Nasus it should be pretty hard for them to reach 8 HP right definitely don't count them out I, I think there's a world where they definitely can hit Nasus for 8 damage they're gonna start trying. Alright. That deals three to him. What else? Got more? They could have the slow speed tornado too, I suppose. No? Oh, they lost Eye of the Storm. Alright. Hey, you know what? That's not so bad. Let's try Siphoning Strike. I just think that sounds funny right now. And they can't really interact with it. If they try, I'm just going to ride negation. Joyful and swift. Or draw, which is something that this deck does a lot of, so it's no surprise there. Deal two to a unit, alright. And gotcha. Wow. Hmm, okay. Ride negation, destroy a mana gem, which we don't need. Get rid of the gotcha. No more gotcha, please. Oh, wow. They're also on Mystic and a Tidal Invocation. So I guess it was pretty easy for them to reach all that. You know what? That's impressive. I really didn't think they would have that much removal right now. That is impressive. Okay. Fair enough. Alright, what else we got? We're on double vengeance. Alright. Slipstream. So now Neela's leveling. Ow. Rude. I guess we can just vengeance. That's pretty painful. You called and I answered. Another Janna. Okay. Let's do Glimpse. I kind of want some more cards. 
if I'm going to be dealing with all this. And we're going to get our Undying back anyways. Mm-hmm. Mm Alright. So, it's probably looking like... Senna? One goes down, thousands to go. Free slipstream. All right, we've killed two Neela and one Janna so far. They could very easily be on like slow speed tornadoes. And that would definitely kill my Senna just straight up. So we might have to hold our death grasp as a response. Idiom. Let's attack with both of these. You taking all that? Or what? I'm kind of down. I'd like to be on another eradication too. That way we can deal with the Janna again. Oh wow. Okay, so they go to 9. Our hand state's actually pretty good. It's the board state I'm a little worried about. I need to be able to kill the Janna, and then I can just castigate all the followers. If they play just like the quick attack dudes, I mean, that's no problem. Sunk Temple. That is also an issue. Yeah, I don't really have landmark destruction at the moment, do I? Try to kill the Janna. Alright, so that's two Janna, two Neela. All dealt with. That is fantastic. They don't have enough mana to play another Janna. Alangale. Uh, annoying. Expected though, pretty expected. Cloudwinder, and then draw like 8 billion cards, okay. Another Nasus. That's a big boy. That's the biggest boy, actually. He's so huge. Open attack Andy? No. No, they're open attacking me. That's actually so cringe. Alright. Play Nasus. It's like, I can't vengeance any of that. No way. Ain't no way it was ever a vengeance there, so I guess I just can't do much, right? Good luck reaching 12. Huh? I'm just gonna lead next turn with Castigate straight up. Invocation, Invocation. Okay. Oh, they want a Fearsome Blocker. That's what that is. That's cute. I like that actually. Double title Invocation for that. And then Howling Gale. Bruh, how'd they put my Nasus down to 5? Just like that. It's an easy bit worrying, but... I think we're okay. Again, all we need to do is do the Castigate here. And then Nasus is just gonna hit for Infinity and Beyond. We can even Vengeance Anila that comes down as a Fearsome Blocker. Alright. Big Nasus, we trust. No fearsome blockers. Let's go. None of those, please. That's a fearsome blocker. Manifest two different elemental spells you played this game. They cost zero this round. They have a lot of choices. They got tornadoes. They got uh, slipstream. The invocations. Pretty much everything, yeah. Vengeance. And then they could probably do Slipstream as a response to this and get another Fearsome Blocker, so we're going to have to keep going and keep going and keep going. Hmm. They cannot kill Nasus, though. That's the thing. I don't care. There's no way they can hit 11 HP now before just using damage to kill me. Ain't no way. Even if they got Fast Speed Tornado and Slow Speed Tornado. Idiom? Okay. Swing. 
with our fearsome attacker. And then the plus two, right? Formless Blade. Can't they play plus two attack on the medium? They cannot. Wow! Look at that. See, like, there's just no way they're reaching that HP. Let's get that Nasus level up animation on the way out. Bonk. Life and death inexorably interwoven. Yep. Let's go. And for the final deck, I'm going to change the pace quite a bit. I already covered two control decks, so let's get a very fast aggro deck going. This one is going to be borrowing Zed from the Kale Zed deck, and then also adding in Gwen, so this is going to be the most expensive deck to craft of the three. But it's a really cool, fun, aggressive deck where we want to utilize the uh, Hallow stuff from the Gwen package, and also Ephemerals, having Zed have a Ephemeral attacker. All really cool synergies that we're going to be using. So, starting us off, we have Boisterous Host, a 1 mana 2 1 Hallow. After I die for the rest of the game when allies attack, Hallow your first attacker, giving it plus 1 that round, and this stacks. So, if we have like 3 Hallowed units dead, that will be a plus 3 to our first attacker every turn, which feels really, really good. Next, we have Double Mark of the Isles, 1 mana Burst Seed Spell, grant an ally plus 2 plus 2, and Ephemeral. So, we're going to be using this for protection, trading into things, and also to give one of our allies Ephemeral. That way, we can get Shark Chariots from the Grave, which I'll explain later. Shadow Apprentice, 1 mana 1 1, Elusive. When you summon an Ephemeral ally, give me 1 0 this round. So, he's going to be amping up. We can also give him Hallow, get him up to like 5 or 6 attack, and then he's hitting for really cheeky Elusive damage that, you know, it's kind of hard for the opponent to block. Double Wuju style, we'll be using this as protection and also trading. One mana burst feed spell, give an ally plus two this round, create meditate. For an additional two mana, if we want to play it in the same turn, we can give an ally plus two HP this round, so that feels really good as well. Next we have Greenglade Duo, two mana to one elusive, so same as our Shadow Apprentice here. However, she has one more attack and she gains plus one if uh, you summon anything, not just ephemerals. So she's really good too. We just have double ramping elusive dudes that want to hit the opponent's face and that feels really, really good too. Next we have Redeem Prodigy, two mana two two attack, summon an attacking Ghastly Band. Ghastly Band's an ephemeral, so we have ephemeral synergy and we also have a hallow unit going in, that way it can die and then give us ramping attack stats. And here is a cornerstone of the deck, Shark Chariot, two mana three one, cannot block ephemeral, last breath. So when he goes to the grave, the next time an ephemeral ally attacks me, revive me attacking. So if a shark is in grave, it will resurrect whenever you attack with any ephemerals. That's why we can give some things ephemeral pre-comp that with Mark of the Isle, send it in, and we get shark, which is super good, super good. So if we have multiple sharks in the grave, then we also get to summon multiple sharks during each attack. So we got we kind of get to play a swarming play style that kind of comes out of nowhere it's a really cool thematic it's been in the game for a long time and it's really awesome to me to have shark chariot be like a very viable deck again this one's gonna be pretty expensive there's only two epics but for the most part you just gotta get the gwen and uh, get the commons and rares going and then this deck will perform for you it's been uh pretty popular i've covered it on meta report a couple times it's a good one Next we have Double Stage Hand, 2 mana 4, 2, Ephemeral, and also play Stun an Enemy, making it to where they can't attack or block. We want to primarily be using this on attack turn, that way we have an Ephemeral Attacker for Sharks, and we also get to stun like a blocker that the opponent could have, that way we get to push even more damage. Next we have Triple Moonlit Glen Keeper, 3 mana 2, 3, Fearsome. When you summon an Ephemeral Ally, grant it an additional plus 1, so hey, we got some more Ephemeral Synergy here. Nightfall, so if you do not play this card first in the round, summon a Sapling, which is Ephemeral, and Challenger. He will be a 3-1 because of the Glen Keeper buffing him, so that feels great. You can just use that to trade into things and summon back some Sharks. Here is our epic, Opulent Foyer, 3 mana landmark. When I'm summoned, summon a Ghastly Band. Also, round star, if you have the attack token, summon another Ghastly Band. The best time to play Opulent Foyer is on defense turn 3, when you're attacking on evens, because you can play the Foyer on defense 3, get the Ghastly Band right away, use it to block, deter the opponent's attacks, and then round start turn 4, you get another Ghastly Band, which is a really good curve, because you can play Foyer on 3 into Gwen on 4, and that feels absolutely insane. Next we have Double Shadow Assassin, another elusive unit that uh, draws 1, so really cool. Can just use this as a elusive... Um, Hallow Holder if we're not on Duo or Apprentice, and we also get the plus one draw, so that's really cute. And next we have Stalking Shadows, another draw card. Three mana burst speed spell, pick a follower from the top four in your deck. 
draw it, place the rest into your deck, and then create an exact ephemeral copy of that card that you chose in your hand. So you get a two for one deal, which is really cool, especially since we want ephemeral synergies. We can hit sharks with this, we have extra sharks. We can hit the elusives with this, that way we can play them on the attack turn, get our elusive ramping, and then just kind of try to win that way. Really good to uh, refill resources. Next we have Zed, three mana, three, two with quick attack. Attack, summon an attacking living shadow with my stats. Living Shadow is an Ephemeral. Since it copies his stats, if we attack with Zed first and he gets like plus three Hallow and goes up to six attack, the Living Shadow will also gain the Hallow buff and be at six attack, which feels insane. That's such a cool synergy that Zed and Gwen have together. So it's even more attack pressure. The opponent has to block Zed or a Shadow because if both hit, Zed will level and then be even stronger and harder to deal with and we'll keep attacking with Hollow, and then keep summoning shadows that also get the attack and just going to basically snowball over the game just like in league of legends and next we have our other champion gwen four minute three four uh, also with quick attack and Hollow attack when another ally gains power from Hollow, so do i drain two from the enemy nexus so if you attack with something first in the line and it gets plus three no matter where gwen is in the attack line she's also going to get the same plus three so that's really really important you want to make sure you're not attacking with gwen first as long as you have you know another unit that way you're not wasting hallow attack and you get to double dip the value she also drains too which is really good against like aggressive matchups she levels if she has dealt 10 damage through her attack and also her drain effect and then she gets to basically drain more uh, from the opponent, depending on how much attack she has. And rounding us out, we have Dragon Ambush, 5 mana slow speed spell. Start a free attack with two Dragonlings. So what's really nice about this is that the Dragonlings are ephemeral, which means any sharks are going to come out for this attack as well. So we're basically playing like a rally type card in this deck, which is super, super strong. Also, the first Dragonling that gets summoned will gain Hallow. And you'll heal a bunch, making this like a one card win con versus aggro matchups. If they're trying to burn you and you resolve Dragon Ambush with like plus three Hollow, you just won the game. There's like nothing the opponent can do about it except for try, you know, uh, fervor and just cheating the, the strike and stuff like that. But yeah, Dragonlings, super, super good there. You can also lead your attack turns with Dragon Ambush. So you start the turn and like, let's say you have Green Glade Duo and Shadow Apprentice on the board already. And you do first action Dragon Ambush on your attack turn. They're going to summon two Dragonlings. So that's plus two for both of your elusives. And then if you summon any sharks, that's going to be even more pluses. And then you get to attack with them right after. And the opponent is pressured to block the Dragonlings and the sharks and stuff. So it's just going to be hard. It's just going to be hard for the opponent to deal with. And you're going to ramp up your attack and basically hit the opponent for 15 plus damage in one turn. Which is something that this deck can just like pull out of nowhere. So even if the opponents are like playing super defensive, this deck can still just net cheesy wins. Basically out of nowhere. It's really, really scary. And that's it for the deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. And for the example game, we have a very popular meta deck, Morgana Mordekaiser. Oh, our hand is kind of nasty overall. So we can play Boisterous on one, Float Mark of the Isles, play Zed on two, or I mean on three. That'd be insane if we could play Zed on two. Um, and then we can play Dragon Ambush at some point in the mid game. Like Dragon Ambush is actually one of our strongest cards. So I like keeping it as long as the rest of the hand looks playable, which it does. Um, yeah, let's Boisterous. Morgana Mord. Send it. Off. Another Boisterous? Hmm, okay. I mean, I guess we can do that too. Since we plan on playing Zed on 3. Alright, yeah, they're just gonna put up some blockers. This makes sense. They're probably on Hate Spike too. Play Zed. If they Hate Spike, we can't really stop it unless we want to commit the mark. Uh, I'm kind of down. Like, it's kind of okay. It's really good attack pressure at the end of the day. Yeah, so we're going to send everything. Right, let's go, Zed. Get in there. That's another 5-1. Pressuring some blocks here. Nice. All right. So we got a lot of the early game dudes. They only have a husk left. Unfortunately, they also got a lot of our cards. <laughs> and they killed our champion. Ooh. I like that. Inquisitor? That's kind of cringe. Funnily enough, though, I think I can do a Boisterous Host here. And then next turn, do Suppression Glen Keeper. Because <laughs> that will uh, Nightfall my dude. So I'm kind of so down to have Suppression in hand at the moment. Suppression and Glen Keeper. 
The only thing I wish is that I had like shark down instead of triple boisterous. If we had a shark engrave, we'd actually feel really good about all this. Wait, you're shackling my sapling? Oh, I mean, okay. That feels pretty fine to me. Buff up the Moonlit Glen Keeper. What you gonna do? Ain't no way you're putting Morgana in front of something. The oh, there is a way you're putting Morgana in front of something. Okay, so let's go ahead and do Wuju style. And meditate. That way this unit can live. And we just killed one of their champions. I'm surprised they didn't block with the Inquisitor. That's a lot less commitment unless they want to kill this with Horde and then just like resuppression me. I guess that could be a play. Another Glen Keeper. Oh wow. I like that too actually. Huh. What if we just play him this turn and then do Dragon Ambush next turn? No, I kind of really want the Sapling, so we're probably going to end up playing. Alright, let's do the Dragon Ambush right now. Yeah, this is probably our best time to do it. Huh? Bonk bonk. Four of these little dudes. Three three two two. Mark the Isles. Trade that. That way they both die. That way Mordekaiser does not suppression me. It'd be nice to top deck like Green Glade Duo and stuff too. I think if I was on my elusives, we'd push so much damage here. Shark, okay. Hello, Shark. We'll take that, and then Nightfall the Glen Keeper. I do not care about this. Deathless, too, so I'm gonna have to do it again. Holy guacamole. Let's give the Hallow to the Fearsome. Just keep pushing. If I draw into another Dragon Ambush, then I could just win now since I have the shark in the grave. If I draw into Stalking Shadows to refill my hand, that should also feel pretty nice. I don't really care about the suppression. I am kind of mad that this Inquisitor's Deathless up there on Mordekaiser. I mean, I'm just going to be suppression for four. Which will feel pretty miserable, but it is what it is, I guess. Yeah, they're stalking to refill. Uh, depression. And... Talking. Just do both. Might as well commit to that. Moonlit Glen Keeper, so we're going to be on multiple Glen Keepers next turn. Or Shadow Assassin to draw more cards. I like being on the Shadow Assassin. Pass right now, though, in case they are on Mord again. And also, so Inquisitor does not kill my Shadow Assassin. Nice. Alright, so we get to play the game a little bit here. Hello, Gwen. Let's do... Shadow Assassin. Shark. We can do Shark Gwen. That's gonna summon back our other shark too. Oh wow. Spike. Okay. Incy bit annoying. Spike Gwen. My goodness, what is all this? The midnight rubble! And so we begin! Vengeance. Yeah, if I play the Ephemeral Stalking, it's also going to get removed. But like, two sharks would be kind of nice here too. Yeah, maybe it was just play the Ephemeral Shadow Assassin. I was worried about more hate spikes and like cheaper pings too. I don't really mind getting the Vengeance though. Okay, yeah. We should just straight up win next turn, right? This would be so hard for them. Another shark in the grave. And then we play our Ephemeral Shadow Assassin. It's kind of better to draw out the game because, like, their hand state was so little. Spirit Leech kind of refilled them, though. It is what it is. Alright. Third shark in grave. Heal. Go ahead. Aha! Play Green Glade Duo first. 
That might warrant a response right away too. I kind of yeah. I, I wish Gwen was a bit cheaper, because that's what I was trying to do. I was just trying to bait something, and then play her after. Okay, stage hand is nice. Even if they play Mord, we should just win through. Um, okay. Try this. Let's go, Shark. One, two, three. Shark attack, do 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 do. Shark attack, do do. Let's go. That's fun. And then they have to deal with uh, two elusives. One of them is threatening lethal right away. One is putting them down to one HP, so I guess they could just be on another death grasp. Yep, that is the death grasp. Man, they are drawing this out. They just don't want to lose. Oh, another stocking. That's OP. Three. Stocking. Uh, Shadow Assassin again. I mean, we can literally just run that back. Glen Keeper's fine too. But having more draws just feels kind of nice. Glimpse of Beyond. Yep. Their ability to draw half of their deck. Kind of insane. I mean, mine too, but. Stop drawing. Oh wow. You leave me no other choice. Organa, huh? I, I don't really vibe with that to be honest. Oh. I don't really vibe with Morgana level at the moment. So no thank you. No thank you on that. Zed. Okay. Shadow Assassin. That threatens lethal right now, so they have to come up with something. There we go. Slow and steady. We always get there. It's just kind of dragged on. And that's it for Shadow Isles. Extra shout out to the patrons on screen. Much love and thank you for supporting. So for some closing thoughts, the first two decks should be very easy to craft, at least in terms of champions because you get some number of Vagard, Nasus, and Senna right from the get-go. The main thing I wanted to do for this one was showcase how powerful single target removal spells from Shadow Isles are, while also giving you an alternative faster deck via Zed Gwen. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a sub if you're new, and also a like for the algorithm, that way other new players can see this video. Thank you so much for watching, and have a good one. Laters!